Today, I am very excited to be speaking with Representative Barry Moore of Alabama's 2nd Congressional District. Representative Moore serves on the House Agriculture Committee and the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. Welcome, Representative Moore. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Good morning, Amanda. Thank you for having me. Honored to be here. So, the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in computer science and STEM. So why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Well, you know, I think it's a great experience. It looks obviously awesome on a resume, but it also gives an experience of, of, of working through the process and competing for jobs. I mean, and competing for opportunities. That, that part of life is just free market competition, right? Especially in, 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 in the world we live in. And so I think it's a great opportunity for students to participate. Anytime you can uh, sort of build that experience level, you got something on your resume. And I think in ways you learn things by doing that, often more so than looking at a textbook. Now, the App Challenge is a bipartisan initiative with support from both Republicans and Democrats. Why should members, regardless of their political affiliation, host app challenges within their districts? Well, I think we all represent our district, regardless of party, right? I mean, we're all Americans at the end of the day. And, you know, I say all the time that uh, I represent all 800,000 or so people in my district, regardless of whether they even voted for me. So I think it's important that we, we, uh, we, we allow, or as, as party, not necessarily as parties, but as representatives, we, we allow our district to compete and to get to know who we are and, and uh, inspire our students regardless of party affiliation or political leanings. Great, so we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. What advice do you have to students who are interested in the challenge? Well, I think, like I said, experience is, is a wonderful teacher. And so regardless of your level of knowledge, often working with other people, getting in those challenges, and you just never know. I mean, you never know where you're going to wind up in life. So I think it's important. To, uh, my daddy always said, and this is a Southern saying, but if the only job you start at the top is well drilling, right? So, so start at the bottom, wherever you're at, that's your base and work your way up. And by doing this sort of thing, these challenges allow students the opportunity to compete to learn from other students who are probably much more experienced in that area. And then you just never know where you're gonna wind up. So I think it's always important to face challenges head on and, and take every opportunity available. And as a freshman member, this is your first time hosting the app challenge. So what are you most excited for? Well, you know, just learning. I'm, I'm, I am pretty computer literate, to be honest with you. My staff has to help me. I've learned to do Zoom calls, obviously. But uh, for us old folks, it's nice. As freshmen, we're young in a lot of ways as far as experience on the Hill. But this sort of thing is new to us. And so, um, you know, uh, for our generation to work with people up and coming who are building those sort of technologies and those apps, it's quite an honor, honestly. And, and uh, I hope to learn something as well. And why do you think early intervention in STEM and computer science is so important? I think it allows students to kind of identify where their, their uh, lane is, so to speak. You know, a lot of times, and I see it in education, especially we, we, we have children that we may say, well, they don't fit the mold or they're not this or they're not that. But you just never know that one person that's going to that, that's gonna have an opportunity to kind of find where they belong or something they're really good at. And I think it's important to, to get people early on in life and allow them as young students to, to kind of say, hey, this is what I want to do in my life, or this gives me opportunities at least to develop some areas where they feel comfortable, so to speak. And not everybody's going to be a great math person or a science person or a computer person or a construction person or even a diesel mechanic, whatever the case may be. We don't know that we try. So I think it's important to avail these opportunities to all students. So the switch to online learning this past year revealed significant learning equity caps, gaps across the nation. How do you think Congress should address these gaps? Well, one thing we're doing in Ag Committee is just, you know, Ag Committee represents a lot of rural areas because you got a lot of farmland in so many of these, um, these uh, districts. And um, one of the things we recognize is broadband availability because once everything's shut down, students, and if you're doing instruction at home or if you're doing, you know, online doctor visits, you know, telemed, they call it, whatever. So so for us, one of the things we've, we've had an opportunity to do on Ag Committee is fund some broadband expansions to some rural areas that are underserved. And I think there's a gap there that we need to fill. And from my perspective, that's an area that we can sure help, especially once seeing, like you said, the shutdown, Amanda, where people just did, they didn't go to class, they didn't go to work, you know, they didn't have doctor's appointments and office visits. And so for us to expand broadband and allow people to service in rural areas, that that's kind of a gap that we're trying to fill right now, and hopefully we'll be successful. And additionally, 
What do you believe to be the biggest issue in the STEM community today? And what do you think should be done about that? You know, I, I I don't know. I going forward, I know we we've got some opportunities in cybersecurity. I mean, we're facing some issues that we've seen recently with the pipeline shut down and meat processing shutdowns and that sort of thing. And I don't know how that falls into STEM. I'm learning a little bit about, like I said, about this challenge and what it does. But obviously, going forward, technology is going to be a huge part of the challenge for national security and to make uh, the American people's way of life kind of consistent with leading the way. And so. So hopefully um, the challenges I see there is just making sure that we allow students to learn the process, to be exposed to that, and develop, knowing going forward, cybersecurity and, and technology is going to be a huge player in the future markets. And what is your favorite app on your phone? That is a good question. I looked at that question this morning. Does Facebook count? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I use face. A lot of old people like me use Facebook. Um, my kids send me TikTok stuff that's pretty amazing sometimes. Um, and I tell you, I like, there is a life 360. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And, uh, it allows me just for my kids to kind of, we know where everybody's at. Everybody's safe. Even my married daughter, it's just, she likes to know we're home. Everybody. So, um, you know, that's one of the apps that we use a lot just when kids, cause we travel so much to know that they're home or safe or, you know, where they're at and, uh, and if they, how far away they are, if they need something that that's kind of an app that that's outside of the social media stuff that I use that I, I find pretty effective. I have that app too. <laughs> and what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, you know, when you say technology, is it just got to be computer stuff or what? Like, however you interpret it. Well, I, you know, for me, I do a lot of offshore fishing and I know this is kind of weird, but there are apps out there and technology that allow you to navigate and attract fish and kind of see water temperatures and I mean, you can see from my pictures in the background, I like to fish. So, so those are apps that us old guys really enjoy that make uh, finding the fish a lot easier and, uh, and enjoying a day offshore weather apps, that sort of thing that allows to dodge storms, but to find the fish, see the water temperature and, and uh, see where they're biting maybe. So it's a little cheap app for us, but that's one of the things for an old guy that I really find useful. Got it. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. And for our viewers, remember the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live, so you can register and submit your apps between now and November 1st. Thank Let's you. Let's look at them, second Congressional District. Let's do this. <laughs>